Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I just want to give you guys a quick review of all of the Skullamance cards released as of July 23rd, so basically what's coming in the next set, and that's what we're going to be covering, starting with today's new cards. Um, and the first card is going to be Headmaster Kalthizad, so a 5 mana 4-6 spell burst if this spell destroys any minion summon them so when it's talking about spell burst if you don't already know it refers to the next spell you cast after the minion is summoned so you play headmaster kelty zod and then your next spell uh can benefit from the spell burst effect so if you play it with a card like ramming speed and that ramming speed card happens to destroy two of your opponent's minions then you get to resummon them on your side of the board so situationally a really insane card um, but if you have something like a single target spell, like a Shadow Ward Death, it can still be really strong. So for seven mana on the same turn, you get to play a four or six. You get to destroy one of your opponent's biggest minions, and then you get to bring it back on your side of the board, which is really crazy powerful. Um, obviously, this is going to fit more into control decks rather than a very aggressive kind of deck. But if you are playing that slow control value game, this is probably going to be a card that you want in your deck as long as you have some decent spells to play with it. And since this is Skullamance, which is basically in World of Warcraft, like a, uh, a school for magic that's infested by undead, I imagine there's going to be a lot more good spells coming in this set, such as the next one, Combustion. So it's a three mana mage spell. Deal four damage to a minion, so that's like a Shadow Bolt right there, and any excess damage is both neighbors. So if you deal one damage to a minion and destroy it, then it's going to deal three damage to the minions to the side, and both of those are going to take damage equally. So if you destroy a one health minion, you can also kill off two three health minions at the same time for the price of three mana, which is quite good. Um, and that way, it's kind of like a weaker version of that Lightning Breath card that Shamans have, which is deal four damage to three minions, but it requires you to have a dragon in hand, which um, Dragon Shaman was not really a thing. So this can just go in any mage deck. And as it is there, it's pretty decent. Uh, also a decent candidate for spell damage. So if you do five damage to a minion with plus one spell damage, then um, you could deal like two to one and then three to the side minions. And that plus one spell damage basically doubles on any excess damage which is nice so this should be a pretty good uh mage spell um obviously you could go in control but if it's in a tempo-ish deck you might want to include it as well it's pretty efficient removal and uh good at clearing a bunch of small minions off of the enemy's board and uh since the last set there have been a lot of really early board flooding minions in place so it seems like a good spell to slot in currently Okay, next up, Steel Dancer. So it's a 4 mana 4-4 four, four, battle cry. Summon a random minion with cost equal to your weapon's attack. So for this to be remotely good, you have to have a weapon equipped. So it's a rogue and warrior card, you can tell, because it has a rogue on the left border and warrior on the right border. If you don't already know, a lot of the cards in Skullamance are going to be dual class, which means they count as both classes as far as a class card goes, and you can put them in both class decks. So if you're playing Warrior, you can play it. If you're playing Rogue, you can play it as well. So um, for this to be good, you have to have a decent weapon equipped. In Rogue, there really aren't that many good weapons currently. Um, there is the three mana scimitar blade where if you combo it it gets plus two attack So it's a three mana two two weapon But then it becomes a four two weapon if you have a combo that turn So if you played steel dancer with a four attack weapon equipped then that's a four mana four four that summons a four cost minion Which is pretty good uh, Also, you could throw on deadly poison and make it a six attack weapon and then you get a six cost uh, the potential is there for it to be pretty good. The question is, are you going to be willing to build a deck around that card just to get the benefit off of it? And I'm a little skeptical about that. Um, I mean, sometimes weapons are good. Like, obviously, in Pirate Warrior, hitting the face is really nice, so it might fit more into those aggressive warrior decks more than rogue decks at the moment. Uh, but there has to be some decent weapons for you to really want to include it. And I don't think anyone's going to put Gorehow in a deck just to get like a 7 cost minion with this, but maybe if you have upgrades and Captain Greenskin in the deck, then that makes it a bit better. So it may go in aggressive warrior decks, and I think that might be about it, unless Rogue gets some really nice weapons this set, so we'll see. Um, it's really dependent on the quality of the weapons and if the weapons are viable as well. 
So next up, Infiltrator Lillian. It's a 4-mana four 4-2 four stealth, death rattle, summon a 4-2 four forsaken Lillian that attacks a random enemy. So basically it's a 4-mana four 4-2 four that death rattles into a 4-2, but it's a little better than that because the 4-2 that gets summoned triggers immediately. So kind of like that 2-cost Hunter Demon, um, the one that is... I forget the keyword, but it, dormant, dormant. So for two turns, it does nothing. But when it comes out two turns later, it's a 5-4 that immediately attacks an enemy. And that immediate attack is nice because it can hit face too. Um, but if they happen to like destroy an Infiltrator Lillian while it's stealthed, then I believe what's going to happen is that, that Forsaken Lillian, the death rattles, is going to attack something immediately. So even if they kill it off, it's still going to deal 4 damage to something, which could be face or could be a minion. And uh, maybe put down some minions that aren't so great to attack into um, so that the 4 attack is kind of wasted. But in general, it seems pretty decent. And it's also a stealth card. So um, stealth rogue could use some new decent minions. And I think this fits pretty nicely into that deck. It's also quite aggressive. So if you play it on turn four and then on turn five you attack it into something you get to trade into a minion and get a minion on the back side of it and if your opponent's board is clear then you're going to get four damage in on the face which is pretty nice trading into a minion four to the face um that kind of sounds like a better delayed fireball to me and fireball is really nice so i would see this as a pretty solid card uh also for stealth rogue you know you have like the draw two if you have a stealth minion so that stealth synergy is going to be nice in those cases too so a pretty nice aggressive card um may go in some other rogue decks as well something uh death rattle based like anka the buried or which makes all your death rattle minions into one mana one ones but you still get the death rattle effect at full power and um i don't know if there was like a value rogue it has pretty good value on it um Control Vogue, not really a thing, so I guess that's about it to comment on it. But it's different than just standard Galakron stuff at the moment. Okay, next is Cycle of Hatred. Seven mana Demon Hunter spell. So it deals three to all minions. And then summons a three three for every minion killed. So for five mana, Chaos Nova does four damage to all minions on the board. So this is two mana more to deal one less damage. But the benefit is that you get to summon a bunch of spirits if you happen to kill off some of the board. So the ideal scenario would be there's just a, a bunch of random stuff on the board and you kill off everything and then you get like 21-21 of stats. But that is uh, kind of situational. Not super situational though because what you can just do is set up the board so that you can get that to happen. So if you have some minions, you can trade it into their minions. Um, maybe you get all of your minions down to a really low health state, and then they come back as 3-3 spirits, and you get your opponent's big minions down to a low health state. So they also come down to uh, basically within the 3 damage threshold. Um, oh, actually, you could also use this with that one guy, the 2-mana neutral demon that uh, doubles the damage of spells. So then it can deal... 6 damage on turn 9, and then summon 3-3 three, three spirits. That could be pretty good. 6 damage is going to pretty much kill almost anything. Um, so basically a board wipe, and then getting your own board for 9 mana. That actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> kind of like Plague of Death, but then actually having tempo on the back of it. Um, just doesn't really deal with death battles too well. So uh, I do see some potential for this card. It's obviously a bit situational. Um, deal three damage to all minions. It's not as strong of a board clear as like a flame strike. But if you can get those spirits to come back on your side of the board, then spending your whole turn clearing the board um, can be rewarded by still having something to follow it up with and maintaining your tempo. So I think that this will probably be a pretty decent card and see some play somewhere as long as Demon Hunter feels like going above a curve of six mana um which currently not so much i mean most of the demon hunter cards that really see play are quite cheap um and then you just skull of gudan in order to get more uh fuel for the fire until you burn through your whole deck and hopefully win but uh, if there's anything along the lines of mid-range or control i could kind of see it there i have tried a couple times to make kind of a more controlling demon hunter work um and there really hasn't been the cards to actually make it super viable yet but maybe this set actually includes some of that i mean cycle of hatred is a good start so we'll see um next up brittle bone destroyer it's a four mana three three rare battle cry if your hero's health changed this turn destroy a minion so there's a lot of ways 
Oh, and it's a priest warlock card. So there's a lot of ways that you can change your health in a turn as priest or warlock, especially as warlock. So as warlock, you could play Reign of Fire, one mana, deal one damage to everything on the board, including heroes. And then that would allow you to trigger this at five mana. Also dealing one damage to all your opponent's minions. So kind of a pseudo board clear there. And you get a 3-3 in addition to destroying a minion, so that is pretty good. I mean, a lot of the cards that are like just straight up destroy a minion are basically 6 mana. But this doesn't require you to play 6 mana, only if you are doing it by using your hero power, like heal your face for 2 mana, or to life tap, draw a card, and damage yourself for 2 mana. But that's like the worst case scenario. There, there are cases where you could just play it on 4 if you have something on the board which heals you as priest, such as a minion buffed up with lifesteal. Or if you are warlock, if you have some of those self-damage cards, then uh, like attack the opponent's face or an uh, opponent's minion and deal some damage to you, that 3 mana, 4, 5. Um, then you can follow that up with a Brittle Bone Destroyer for 4 mana, destroy a minion, and get a 3-3. So this is really quite an insane card, and the fact it's rare means you can put 2 in a deck, so I think that this is going to see a ton of play. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a 2 copies of in pretty much every Warlock or Priest deck. I, I'm not sure there's that many cards that would be better to slot in than that. Like Siphon Soul, why have that one? You can have a 4 mana version that gives you a 3-3, and all you lose is like, oh, 3 health. So, yeah, better than Siphon Soul for sure. Okay, next up, uh, Boneweb Egg Warlock Minion. Two cost, zero, two. Summon two one, one, uh, two one spiders as a death rattle. But if you discard it from your hand, you get to trigger the death rattle for free. So in something kind of like a zoo Warlock, it's decent because you might want to target your own minions to sacrifice it to add lackeys to your hand. Uh, I think that's the Evil Genius card. So decent, decent target for that. And then you get two two one spiders on the back of that. Or if you are playing anything with discard, then you might be lucky enough to get that trigger for free, um, where you discard a card and gain some other extraordinary benefit, like dealing four damage with the soul fire for one mana. And then you hit this card with it, and you're lucky enough to get two two one spiders on the back of it. So for a discard deck, it's really good. For a zoo deck, it can be decent enough. It's not a bad option. But if you have something kind of in the middle where you have a little bit of discard, it could be good enough. Um, maybe just Zoo that runs Soulfire and happens to have Boneweb Egg, and then you try to avoid playing the Boneweb Egg until it's your last card in hand. I could see something like that. Or just full discard. In, in Wild, going full discard with this, uh, there's that one 3-man three 3-3 three, three, that if you discard it from the hand, you get to play it immediately. And that was <laughs> kind of a crazy card. Um, so having this in addition to that means you could just discard your whole hand, get a bunch of minions without paying the mana cost for them. It could be pretty crazy and wild. So it's, uh, it's decent. I don't think it's like the strongest card in the set by any means. Brittle Bone Destroyer is obviously just way more crazy. But it's uh, interesting and I like that they're pushing discard a little bit while also having something in there for something like a zoo. Though it wouldn't be the strongest zoo choice. Okay, next up, Disciplinarian Gandling, 4 mana, 3, 6. After you play a minion, destroy it immediately, and then summon a 4-4 four, four failed student. So it's a 4 mana, 3, 6. That's a good stat line. And then in addition to that, if you're playing an egg deck, like Boneweb Egg, for instance, then you can get those death rattles to trigger. And then on the back of it, you transform your 0-2 into a 4-4, four, four, giving it huge value. Kind of reminds me of... Uh, Tekron, I think his name is, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, and turn all of your lackeys into 4-4s four, for the rest of the game. Um, obviously, this is only going to trigger while it's in play, but getting a bunch of 4-4s four, on the deck seems pretty strong for like a zoo-type deck. Um, and you don't have to play Death Rattles necessarily. It could just be playing a 1 mana lackey, and then it becomes a 4-4, four, four, and that is really good. Um, even if this triggers just once, and you get like a few stats off of it that is already really good because a four mana three six is pretty solid by itself um so one of the more meme decks i've been trying which yes it's a not super serious but like egg priest so there's like the chromatic dragon egg which is a five mana zero three and it death rattles into a dragon which you discover no one really plays that but it can get you like eight eights so if you happen to play this on four and then you play a chromatic dragon egg and that dragon turns into an 8-8, or maybe a 12-12 Deathwing. And then you also get 
a 4-4 student on the back of it, and you don't have to wait for the egg to pop because you just destroyed it immediately. That seems like pretty good. So um, obviously this is probably going to lean more as a Warlock card, but it would be interesting to see if like Egg Priest was a thing. I mean, there's a lot of cards now that you can buff eggs up, for instance, eggs or other death rattle minions, minions that are generally weak. Um, so it's not out of the question for there to be something like a Temple Priest, but for Warlock, oh yeah, I, I definitely see this being a really good card. Okay, and next up, another Priest Warlock hybrid card, uh, eight mana, Flesh Giant, eight, eight. So it costs one less for each time your hero's health changed during your turns. As Warlock or Priest, uh, this is probably going to occur a lot. Cards like Renew, Heal Your Face for one mana, and you get three health and then to discover a spell on the back of it well that's going to reduce your flesh giant by one so uh if you have just a couple of those effects or hero powers that occur during the course of the game you're going to get something like a five mana eight eight or a six mana eight eight uh it seems pretty decent but if you happen to draw it really late in the game then it could be something like a zero two mana eight eight um in a way it's sort of like a molten giant where it's going to be much better towards the later stages of the game and you might get to play it for zero mana uh, of course that card is now in wild seems pretty decent um there's also the potential of if you do get it down to zero mana you could clone it with certain effects uh so priest has a couple cards that target a minion and allow you to duplicate it um either as a death battle or immediately and there's also Sathrazar, which is a 9-mana card. So before that was kind of played a Nomi Priest, where you would target a 0-mana 7-8 taunt. And the way it got to 0-mana was by playing 12 spells throughout the game. And then you duplicate it, so you get another 7-8 taunt, or in this case an 8-8. Eight, eight. And you add one to your hand, which is going to be a 0-mana 8-8. Eight, eight. And then you add one to your deck, which is also going to be a 0-mana 8-8. Eight, eight. And uh, getting like, I, I guess that would be like... Three extra zero mana eight eights is pretty good, so it's an interesting card. Uh, we'll go in all of the all of the priest warlock decks. Probably not. I think that this is gonna kind of tend towards uh, later game decks because you don't really want to use your hero power if you are playing a tempo based deck like Zoo or this theoretical egg priest I'm talking about. Uh, but rather something that's just going to get a lot of value over the late game and then maybe you want to drop an 8-8 later on for cheap and kind of turn the tide of the game. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So something closer to like a hand lock or a self-damage lock or a control priest that just happens to want to have some big late game guys. Pretty solid minion though. Um, I think it'll see some play. I am not entirely sure what the deck list is going to look like, but it's probably going to be a slower deck. Okay, so let's talk about the rest of the cards. So Druid Shaman are getting Lightning Bloom. So it's a zero mana gain two mana crystals this turn, only overload two. When I saw this initially, I thought it was just kind of okay because it does overload you for two, which means you're taking two mana from your next turn to give to you this turn. But why it's powerful is because of the combo potential. So if you can cheat out a bunch of mana in the same turn, then that means you can just set up ridiculous combos. A really good example would be uh, Kael'thas Sunstrider, where if you played two spells this turn, your third spell is going to cost zero, no matter what kind of spell it is. So if you play Lightning Bloom, Lightning Bloom on turn three into Kael'thas Sunstrider, then that means your third spell that turn costs zero, which means on turn three, you can play a 4-7 and then follow that up with a 10 mana spell, uh, which could be something crazy. Like in, in Wild, it could be like deal five, uh, ultimate infestation, for instance. Uh, deal 5 damage, gain 5 armor, summon a 5-5 five, five ghoul, and draw 5 cards on turn 3, in addition to having a 4-7. That just sounds really game-breaking. So, obviously, this is a card that has some potential, and the fact you overloaded the next turn it wouldn't even matter, because if you have, like, a 5-5, five, five, a 4-7 on board that they have to deal with, it's okay to skip your turn 4, I think, in that case, if you can just get an insane amount of tempo. In standard, it could be um, the Shaman card, which is uh, 10 mana, summon three, five, six taunts, and then overload for three. So if you're already overloading yourself, like four, and then you're going into your turn four, it doesn't matter that you overload another three. So you can overload seven for your turn four, which means you skip your turn four, but at the end of your turn three, you have a four, seven, and three, five, six taunts, which means like if they don't have like the perfect removal, like coin brawl, then they pretty much just lose the game. So 
in that regard, it can be pretty crazy. I'm sure there's other non Kael'thas examples that you can use it for, like uh, Maligos Combo Shaman or Druid, where just having a little bit of extra mana on that combo turn allows you to close out the game, playing all your Lightning Bolts or, uh, I don't know, Lightning Blooming into a swipe. So it seems like a pretty solid card. It's obviously not the original Innovate, which was gain two mana crystals with no drawback, but that would be so broken if it was still there today. And even at gain one mana crystal this turn only, Innovate still played a lot at Android. So this is a card to watch out for. It's definitely kind of dangerous. Okay, Hunter Druid. Get uh, Shando Wildclaw. Three mana, three, three legendary. You choose one. You either give your beasts in your deck plus one, plus one, kind of makes it something um oh geez what was that card it was like the prince not kaelthas i forget it the the two mana two two guy so it was if you only have that as your only two drop in your entire deck then for the rest of your game all cards you draw all minions you draw from your deck are plus one plus one which was really broken so this is like that um with no other requirements it just gives all your beasts plus one plus one and turn three but then you have to play a beast deck or deck that has some beasts in it Alternatively, you can transform it into a copy of a friendly beast. So in a mid-range aggressive kind of hunter deck, you probably go for the give the rest of your beasts plus one plus one because you're probably not going to have a huge beast on the field at turn two or three. But if you are later game with, say, Druid, then you can basically play it in like a kind of big Druid deck. And if you have like a Winged Guardian on turn seven, six, eight, can't be targeted by spells and it reborns, and you copy that for three mana, that's pretty good. It's it's basically like a faceless manipulator that costs two mana less, but can also be used to just buff the beast in your deck. So seems like a pretty solid card. Uh, as long as you're willing to play Druid or Hunter and include some beasts in your deck, I think it would be a card that you just slot in naturally. Um, though not all Hunter decks are going to be like that. You might play Dragon Hunter and not include it. And in Druid, maybe you just have too many spells to want to gain the benefit of giving you beasts plus one plus one and you might not even have any beasts in your deck so maybe it doesn't go in there but if you do play beasts you probably play shando wildclaw next up mage rogue wand thief one mana one two combo discover a mage spell so um obviously not quite as good as like a one mana two one draw card which if you <laughs> know what i'm talking about the demon hunter minion that got nerfed to a one mana one one draw a card as outcast and i think that's still played sometimes but um if you have this then you get to get a one two on the board which is okay discover a mage spell pretty decent uh the fact it's a mage spell means that it has benefits if you're playing a thief rogue where you're trying to steal minions or steal cards from other classes such as the uh quest thief rogue where you have to steal four cards from other classes so it can benefit there though that's a minor benefit really in most cases i think you'll just be looking at it like hey you get a nice spell on the back of having a minion and it only costs you one mana only downside you have to combo it which means unless you feel like using your backstop on turn one probably not going to be using probably not going to be playing it as you turn one but as a later game uh, kind of value card is it good um it just seems kind of decent to me i mean the the later the game goes on the less impact the one two is going to have anyway so later on a card that just kind of like discover a spell for one mana it's not so great it's a little better than that because it is a one two it's kind of on the border between being playable and being kind of meh so I don't really see it going in anything specific. Mage spells are good, but I don't know that if there's like a spell that rogues would love to have from mage that would just make rogues super OP and then like you really put mage a wand thief in your deck just so you can try to get that uh, like one in 10 chance of discovering it. But I mean, there's possibilities there. I don't think it's that strong of a card though. Okay, so Priest Warlock, we already talked about all of those. Steel Dancer covered that, not that strong. Oh, here we go. This is a good one. Shaman Mage, Devolving Missiles. So Arcane Missiles, you deal one damage three times to random enemy minions. Um, in this case, Devolving devolving Missiles, you shoot three missiles at random enemy minions, and they transform into ones that cost one less. 
So the ability to transform your opponent's minions is really strong. If they have anything that's buffed up or has a death battle effect or just has a really big bulky body, then getting hit by that devolving missiles is going to be devastating. And it can't hit face, so it's only going to hit your opponent's minions, which kind of makes it a little better than arcane missiles just by that. But the ability to kind of, in a sense, micro polymorph up to three of your opponent's minions, but hopefully at least the one you really wanted to hit for one mana is crazy good. Uh, I think anything that would be considered like a control deck, definitely including devolving missiles, uh, I want to say like 100%. But even if you're in like a tempo deck, the ability to get through taunts, for instance, or to just uh, devastate your opponent's big minion, or if they put like a huge uh, death battle effect onto a minion, that they don't want to lose, then Devolving Missiles just ruins them. Um, for one mana, it's just going to do so much. So this is a really, 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 really strong card. Wouldn't surprise me if it goes in pretty much every mage or shaman deck. Uh, is that too much to say? I mean, if I was playing like Murloc Shaman, would I include it? Maybe. I, maybe. Like even in something that aggressive, I think it's a candidate. But anything less aggressive, I think you would just include it because it's just really good. Okay, um, let's see. Druid. So, nature studies. Discover a spell, your next one cost one less. So, apparently, with nat uh, studies cards, there's going to be more than one. A study card uh, discovers a type of card, and then the card that is that type is going to cost one mana less. So, I guess there might be a discover a minion, and your next minion costs one less study in some class in the future. But the druid one discover a spell, your next one costs one less. Uh, really, really good. Uh, obviously, if you have like spell combo cards like Kael'thas, it works perfectly with that. So for one mana, you get to play a spell and you just need to play one more spell on the back of that in order to trigger the effect of getting a free spell. Um, and your next spell costing one last means that like if you do it on turn eight and you discover a one cost spell, or if you have another one cost spell in hand, because it doesn't have to be the spell that you discovered, it just has to be the next one you play, it's gonna cost one less. Then you can get that Kael'thas trigger, really nice. Um, beyond that, it's just better than a discover a spell for one mana because that one mana discount is going to apply. And it's guaranteed to apply for you as long as the next spell isn't a zero cost spell. I'm not sure why you would make it a zero cost spell, but, um, it can apply that churn or as far as I'm understanding it, it can also apply in following turns. So if you discount your next spell for the following turn by one, that opens up some combo potentials, um, could be like a, a Maligos play, where having that one mana discount means that you can do something just a little bit more cheesy than normal. So really good card. Um, if you have anything that's going to benefit off of playing a lot of spells for cheap, it's going to be really good. If you're going to try to do some combo potential on the following turn or that turn, then it's going to be really good. Um, if you just want to kind of just throw it in any random deck and get to discover a spell, and in a way, it's almost like a zero cost spell because you're going to get that one mana back at some point in time. Then uh, you could consider that. Might not include in the most aggressive decks because, you know, discover spell, you're not guaranteed to get the one you want. And maybe it could be a few turns before you actually really want to throw out a spell if you're playing lots of minions. But a really, really good card. Um, probably going to be played in wild too, I would imagine. Okay, so then we have a couple of paladin spells. Uh, sorry, Paladin cards. Three mana, four two, goody two shields. Divine shield, spell burst, gain divine shield. So this is a really great minion. A three mana, four two, divine shield, already great on its own. Um, at worst, it's like a three mana, four three, which by itself wouldn't really be playable. But I would think of divine shield more like as two health, because in a lot of cases, it might take more than that one damage to remove it. N not every time is there going to be uh, a deal one damage minion or effect in hand or on the board so in many cases it'll be better like i, I would definitely trade one health for a divine shield um if you play it and they don't deal with it then you have that potential to get a trade in and of course if they don't remove the divine shield it would be <laughs> such a bad mistake on their part but it could happen and if they were only able to kill the divine shield and you had a spell then you can just get a divine shield back so ideal scenario you get to trade and um, 
get that divine shield value and deal four damage to something and keep your minion and then you spell burst gain a second divine shield and it just becomes a great value minion worst case it's basically a three mana four three um though i would treat it more as a three mana four four which would be pretty solid i mean um you don't really see any vanilla three mana four fours that don't have some requirement like having a damaged minion somewhere on the board before you get that four four so it seems really good. Uh, I think this is going to go in a lot of Paladin decks. Probably would play it in something aggressive because it has a lot of attack. Probably would play it in something uh, kind of more controly or mid range because uh, a Divine Shield, easy access to get value trades, and then the spell burst of a second Divine Shield just sets up a potential to be a really huge threat. And your opponent might have to remove it. Like it, if they're the aggressive player, they can't just leave that kind of trading potential on the board. So they might need to spend their turn removing it. So in a way, you could think of it as like it has taunt, making it a little better. So really solid cards should see lots of play. And then um, next we have zero mana, first day of school. Add two random one cost minions to your hand. So really interesting card in that it's a zero mana spell. Um, if you were doing some kind of crazy gadget sand auctioneer, paladin i don't think that's a thing but zero mana spells always have the potential to create scenarios like that or you could do it with something chaothos sunstrider related i keep mentioning him a lot but he is a card that exists so anytime you have the zero mana spell and you have something that can combo with it it's going to make a zero cost card really good because it just sets up so easily for combo potential but uh, beyond that getting two one cost minions for one card um, in a way, you could think of it as like a one cost minion that draws a card because it's it's a zero cost spell. So if you get it on turn one, you can play one of the one cost minions and then you get another random one cost minion on back of it. Um, not too bad. Another potential for it is that you want to have some early game plays, but you're playing something like dual paladin. So you need to keep your deck free of having cheap minions uh, because you don't want to accidentally summon them from your deck. But um, at the same time, you want to be able to play them. So if you have it as included as a spell, then any of those negative side effects of having cheap minions in your deck are going to be uh, thrown at the door because it's a cheap spell that gives you minions. So that has potential there. Um, probably going to be a card that sees some play at some point, may have some wild implications. I'm not sure it's like so good that you would put it in an aggressive paladin deck. Probably not because it's random minions, honestly. But it seems like a solid card. It's very interesting for a zero mana spell. Okay, next up, Priest. So one mana, one four. Um, as far as I know, that would make it the best vanilla stat lined one cost minion in the game. So they gave it to Priest. Because uh, Priest is a card. Uh, sorry, Priest is a class that really likes to heal its minions. So it's kind of a natural fit there. Um, the fact it has four health is nice, but... The minion itself isn't really a big threat. Like, okay, as one attack, it's not really going to be doing much without some other buffs. But if you, you know, coin and then throw out a nice buff on top of it, give it a couple more attacks, then it is going to have a lot of early game uh, trading potential. Though there's been other cards like that as well, like the two, the one mana ma uh, demon that goes dormant for priest. So it's a 2-5 taunt for one mana, but you don't get the 2-5 taunt until turn three. But that wasn't really seeing play. So I kind of wonder if this will. Like, would it really matter that you have the minion on the board at turn one as opposed to turn three? Like, you're not trying to go face. You're just trying to protect your own face, like defend yourself a little bit. And it doesn't have taunt like that demon does. So it might be okay. Like, if Inner Fire ever came back, then obviously it's a high health minion. So it has some potential there. But it's just kind of... Uh, Nicely statted minion, but not too much to say beyond that. I'm not sure it's even good enough. And I, I guess that kind of just shows how crazy Hearthstone has kind of become in terms of the power levels of the cards. A one mana, one four might not really be good enough to be run. So um, we'll see. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I have too much of high hopes for that, really. It's just a four health minion. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It doesn't even have lifesteal like the uh, Priest Legendary. The, uh, what do they call it? The Prime? Okay, um, a couple more cards remaining. Diligent Note Taker for Shaman. Two mana, two, three, spell burst. Return the spell to your hand. So if you play this on turn two, it's basically a two mana, two, three. Uh, and that's going to play a zero mana spell on the same turn. The idea is that you'd probably play it later on, I think. And then 
basically make it like a two mana two three draw a card selectively in a sense so if you play it with farsight you can get another cup or you farsight so maybe on turn five you farsight you diligent note taker you get another farsight and that that's pretty good value um later the game goes on of course the less important the two mana two three body is if you just play it on turn two as a two mana two three like yeah i guess your opponent's probably going to want to remove it spell burst is kind of threatening so you don't want to leave it on the board unless you're a pure smork deck and you just have to rush as fast as possible uh, i think it's decent um in some kind of mid-range anything going from value mid-range control it might be decent enough but at the same time if it's like a really heavy control deck you might not care that much um like if you really want the second copy of the spell maybe you just put in two copies of the spell instead of the diligent note taker like you can't always just assume you're going to get exactly the right spell that you want from the spell burst effect and if you are a pure control deck you might not even really care so much about the two mana two three because it just won't have that much late game impact but it's a decent option anyway Okay, and then we have a couple of really serious warrior cards. Rattle Gore, 9 mana, 9-9. Nine, nine. Death Rattle, we summon this with minus 1, minus 1. That means that if this dies as a 9-9, nine, nine, it comes back as an 8-8, eight, eight, and then it has the Death Rattle, we summon with minus 1, minus 1. So it can come back as a 7-7, seven, seven, and then a 6-6, six, six, and then a minus 5-5, uh, five, five, so on and so forth. Basically, if there is no polymorph effect, then this is almost impossible to remove. So Plague of Death destroys it, obviously. Uh, polymorph devastating against it and um, cards like devolving missiles also decent answers to it though if you're that late in the game you might just want to ignore battle gore and try to go for the warrior's face uh, depends on who's really in the control a situation in that regard so you don't really want to play it for nine mana but what you could do is play it in a um, boom reaver and dimensional ripper warrior deck so 10 mana you can summon two copies of a minion from your deck if you hit rattle gore with that then that is two nine nines that's basically impossible to remove without like a plague of death if you happen to hit that with dimensional ripper warrior i think the game is pretty much over unless your opponent has enough damage to destroy the warrior or unless they have two polymorphs or a plague of death and really i could only think that priest is going to be about the only class that can really deal with that uh consistently um so that seems really good in dimensional ripper warrior and that's probably about it because it's expensive to play and it's slow generally really slow cards that cost like eight nine mana they don't tend to get played in hearthstone like one example is a nubarak which was a rogue card nine mana eight four death rattle summon a four four nerubian and then return uh a nubarak to your hand so that is basically like an infinite value card that it just really wasn't playable because it was too expensive but in warrior you can cheat out your minions so in wild warrior uh you can use there's like a eight mana three three that recruits big minions from your deck you can do that i don't know if that's a thing i don't really play that much wild but in standard warrior the dimensional ripper seems good um boom reaver still in standard so that is like a 10 mana minion that summons a copy of a minion from your deck and gives it rush battle gore seems like a perfect candidate for that Okay, then the next minion is Troublemaker. 8 mana, 6, 8. At the end of your turn, summon two, three, three ruffians that attack random enemies. So, in a sense, it's like a 12, 14, if I'm counting the numbers right. And you don't really get to control those extra stats. But that's okay. Um, I mean, you were probably just going to ram them into enemy minions anyway. And you can kind of, uh, you know, trade nicely to try to set it up, get your opponent's minions down to three health so that when your guys get summoned and they run into them, you'll get the clear that you're looking for. Alternatively, if you are playing kind of for tempo and you have this on an empty board, then that 6-6 six, six is going to go face because it attacks random enemies. So if you're playing an aggressive warrior deck that can't afford to slot in an eight mana minion, that's pretty good. But also if you're playing the dimensional Vipper warrior, like big warrior, then getting this on the back of that is crazy. Uh, so Dimensional Ripper into Troublemaker makes two six eights that summon four three three ruffians. So that's just a lot of stats and a lot of damage. It actually kind of reminds me of that 10 mana Hunter uh, epic spell that just got released in the last set. What was that called? In a Grand Slam summon four three five cleft, cleft hoofs that immediately attack random enemies. Uh, 
But then you get even bigger stats than that on the back of that. So the dimensional ripper play seems even better. So this should be really, really strong. Rattle Gore and Troublemaker, really nice cards. Um, for big warrior or warriors that are kind of mid-rangey, because uh, obviously the mana costs are big, but it does put warrior in a position where you might want to start c considering playing a little bit later than just a pirate warrior, because those are really strong cards if you're willing to go late game. Okay, remaining minions. Uh, transfer student, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, has different effects based on which board you're on. So this is currently playable. They released it before the set came out. Um, not particularly a strong card because it's just really inconsistent. Uh, I think that's like 21 possible effects in play currently. And although some of the effects are strong, like 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, deal 2 damage for 2 mana, solid. Um... You can't rely on it to have the effect you want in any way. And sometimes the effect is just not what you need. Like, would you put it in a super aggressive deck? No, because it's not consistent. Would you put it in a control deck? I don't know about that, because sometimes you just get a 2-mana two 2-2 two two with Divine Shield or a 2-mana two 2-2 two two with Reborn, and that's just not very good in those decks. So it's just kind of a for-fun card. I don't think it was ever really meant to be serious. Um, you could throw it into, like, a Battle Cry Shaman, because I think most of those effects are Battle Cries, or a zoo deck, but I think there's better options, so not really that great. And then we have Cult Neophyte, 2 mana, 3, 2. Your opponent's spells cost one more this uh, next turn. So um, kind of slowing your opponent down a little bit. There was a similar card in the past, which was a 3 mana, 3, 2 mage spell, a uh, mage minion, that just flat out made your opponent's spells cost one more. Uh, obvious problem of that. It's not a battle cry, so if they can remove it, then that effect is gone. Whereas this guy, you cost one less mana, and it's basically like a low thud type effect. So if your opponent's playing, planning on throwing out a bunch of spells in the following turn, then yeah, it does kind of screw them over a little bit. Um, there is a deck in Standard, which is of course the uh, spell druid that tries to summon a bunch of guys once they get up to seven mana crystals uh, with... Oh, jeez, I forget the guy. The guy that summons a bunch of beasts. Like, every time you cast a spell, summon a beast, and then it has a bunch of zero-cost spells or cards, uh, spells that become zero-cost at seven mana or more. And this does kind of throw that off a little bit. So, you cult Neophyte on turn six, and then on turn seven, they can't make the play, so you would delay them a turn technically. Is that enough of a benefit to throw a, just a two-mana three-two into your deck? Probably not. Um, this is probably just going to be one of those pack filler cards. It's just not really strong enough anymore. Um, in the past, like, there was Lothab, which was 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, and then spells cost 5 more, and that's devastating, because that's 5 more mana. That's a lot more than 1 mana. 1 mana, you know, a lot of times they only want to play 1 spell, and 1 mana more, they can still play it. It's not stopping them from doing anything, so not great. Okay, Wretch Tutor, 4 mana, 2, 5, Spell Burst, deal 2 damage to all other minions. So, Spell Burst, once again, you have to play a spell on the back of it, and then you get that AoE effect. So, if you're like on turn 5, and you have a 1 mana spell in hand, maybe that study card, where you play a 2-5, you play the Nature's Study, I think that's what it was called for Druid. So, 1 mana spell has some nice effects there, and then in addition to that, you get a nice AoE, clearing the board, then that makes it a pretty good control card. Um, and interestingly, it's neutral, so you can put it in pretty much any class. It, anytime you think you need more AoE kind of spell effects, but not necessarily using a class spell, then Wretch Tutor might be good. So Paladin is a decent option there. Kind of having extra consecrations. If you're going to be playing lots of equality stuff, you can blow it all up with the spell burst. Or if you're in something like Rogue, which doesn't really have many AoEs, especially ones that do more than one damage, then uh, you can play Wretched Tutor, and that might be interesting. It may actually be good enough to see some play. So Onyx, Mage Scribe, Spell Burst, add two random spells from your class to your hand, Neutral, Dragon, and 4-9 stat line. So a Boulder Fist Ogre is a classic card with 6 mana, 6-7 six, stat line. So this is minus 2 attack, plus 2 health. So comparable to a Boulder Fist Ogre there, though maybe more on the controlly side uh, you probably wouldn't put this in an aggressive deck because four attack on six mana is obviously not that strong but um it's kind of like a bolt of fist ogre that has the spell burst bonus so add two random spells from your class to your hand that is a uh, pretty good value so in a class like mage 
Um, two random spells is going to be really good because mage spells are just naturally good. Um, problem is it has to last a turn in order for you to get the effect off. So if you play it on six, you have to rely on it lasting a turn or else the spell burst doesn't really mean anything. Um, that said, it has nine health. So if your opponent's playing the value game and you just drop this on six, they're kind of obligated to remove it if they don't want to deal with those two extra spells. So in a sense, it's kind of got like a light taunt, but most aggressive decks would definitely just ignore it and go face. Like it doesn't matter how many extra random cards you have if you're dead. So it's not that great. Random cards are decent. I mean, they're random spells at least rather than just completely random cards like random neutral minions. Um, but the sideline is pretty good. It is a dragon. So dragon decks have the potential to benefit from that as well. I think it's a decent choice but not really anything game breaking uh in the past it would have been considered really strong but now it's just kind of decent um just to once again show how much the power creep in hearthstone has occurred <laughs> when like a six mana four nine that gets you two extra cards is maybe not good enough even if it has a dragon title on it um but yeah it's not bad and in arena you would probably draft this a lot because that is pretty good value to be honest Okay, is there anything left here? So all the Spellburst cards announced so far, the study cards, you can see uh, when you discover a, st uh, a card off of a study, it reduces the card, the cost of cards, uh, sorry, it reduces the cost of that type for the next card you play of that type. So even outside of nature studies, there may be some combo potential. If you want to like reduce a minion so that you can do some kind of crazy combo, uh, Levery Jenkins comes to mind, but Levery Jenkins has been moved to wild. So anything that's kind of like clone your minions, but now that your minions are cheaper, you can do that cloning thing one turn earlier. Seems like it could be pretty good. And just discovering a card and then getting a one mana discount for one mana is just pretty powerful in general. So I imagine the nature studies and other studies cards are going to be really solid. But as far as things go, I think that's it for the card announcements so far. Um, at the time of the video, it looks like a few more are going to go up here, uh, but I'm going to cover those in a future video. So I've been Dark Skeleton, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.